welcome to the first blog post reading of Passionista Femme International. I thought I would start with one of the posts that um, means a lot to me because it's to do with a project that I've been developing over quite a few years now, which started in Paris in 2009. Um, not the project, but the germ of the idea, let's say. Um, so yeah, I thought I'll I'll do a reading, like there's book readings, I'll do a blog post reading and um, see how it goes, see how you enjoy it. I won't be reading the entire blog post, maybe just some highlights. And yeah, so in case you don't get a chance to, to read the blog post, uh, you can hear it here. Or if you hear it here and want to read more, you can go to, to the blog. Okay, so here we go. It's no secret to those who know me that my first trip to Paris in 2009 transformed my life on a personal level, which then led me to change my circumstances on an interpersonal level. As a result, I ended my 17-year relationship, divorcing my husband of 14 years and starting life again as a single mother, raising four children. Not an easy decision to make, much less after having been a stay-at-home mum in Melbourne's eastern suburbs. You've known me for a long time, right? How would you have described me years ago? Suburban mum, mm -hmm. doing the pick-up and the drop-off. Um, this energy inside waiting to come out. <laughs> I not only gained valuable constructive inspiration in Paris, but then applied it consistently and saw how it empowered me to become my most authentic self and forge ahead. Because it was a really important moment in your life, because you were, I think you were mature. Comment tu dis mature? Uh, mature. No, you were ready. Yeah. You were ready and this moment was the moment who put you on in the in your your new way life and i got a new mind that's that's what it that's what it was like it's just fantastic it, it's not or maybe like a nice trip or yes i learned some things not you know the, the whole french way or the french perceptions or the french sensibility was just downloaded a hundred percent and i can i so what i can understand it's it was you wake up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how do you say a spiritual, spiritual wake up? Yeah, spiritual wake up. And you open your your eyes on so another perception of life. Yeah. That's magic. And what did you see of me when you when you, I came back? Came back. I yeah. Somebody that um, was more more collected, I think, and just really really positive and certainly benefited from the break but just with a lot more a lot more understanding of yourself and what direction you wanted to go in so what was the reaction of the sisterhood at the time of other women who were also mothers around me what do you like did you gather were the impressions of other mums around me when I was saying that I was going to go to, to Paris. Well, there were two schools of thought when you mm. went to Paris. There was my school, which mm. was a complete aura of what you were doing and totally um, in favour of it and was just so inspired by your guts to be able to step outside your, your life with your four children and to do it, to be really true to yourself <laughs> and what you wanted. And that was, there was the group of us that thought, thought that. But I think there was another school that were like, how could she? How could she leave her husband? How could she leave those kids? She can't do that. <laughs> um, so, you know, and it, I think it was really interesting how, you know, the concept divided, really, didn't it? And, um, yeah, it, and I think it really set everybody apart as to, mm -hmm. to where they were coming. I mean, the school that was with me, we were just so proud of you and so excited for you, excited that you would do something like that. And I had told your story countless times to other people. Why? Because it's inspiring. Why, why, why? Why is it inspiring? <laughs> because you took four weeks out of your life and you went to Paris on your own. And you didn't know anyone. Because you wanted, you told me that you wanted to feel again. You wanted to be 
excited by the things that you used to be excited about. You needed to miss your family and you needed them to miss you. You didn't know what it was going to be like when you came back, but you needed to reinvigorate all of those feelings that were inside you. And, you know, that was really gutsy to be able to do that. Now, a little known detail that I didn't really share with anyone was that I had uh, for a few years already been um, struggling, I guess, with uh, a few autoimmune related issues. And, um, and this was pretty much the main reason that propelled me to, on advice from my doctor, take one month out of my life to try to rebalance my health. Otherwise, the long-term prospect um, was probably not promising. So Paris was, I guess, my bucket list destination based on everything that I had ever dreamed about uh, when I was studying filmmaking at university and even before. The person I see right now is a lot more self-actualized than what she was years ago. Um, confident, mature, has a priorities in order, and is a complete inspiration to everybody around her. She lives the dream. <laughs> Why am I an inspiration? You make things happen. You, you challenge the comfort zones. You, you challenge when something's not right, and you make steps in your life to make it better. So what would you say um, would be, for example, one way that as women that are mothers, you know, um, we can help to support each other better so that we can, you know, then be better in ourselves and then be better, you know, in our families. Well, what would you we could be a bit more aligned and well. We could be a bit more encouraging to one another, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're going to Paris, Luna. That's fantastic. How amazing. How amazing that you're doing that. You're so brave. I really encourage you. Is there anything I can do to help you? get there or help you where you're gone. That's what sisterhood would do. <laughs> we wouldn't say, oh, you can't do that. We would go gossip behind your back and say, mm. actually, your husband always first for children. Mm. It's outrageous. Mm. She thinks she, I mean, she's so important. <laughs> Poor him. At one point, I had three children in nappies and breastfeeding one. And these are people who complain, you know, they've got two children and they can barely cope. I've got, I got four kids. I don't have to explain or, you know, anything. You come live in my shoes for, you know, one day and it's like, then you'll see what it's like. For No childcare in 12 years. Or well, let me do something for you that will make it easier when you're gone so you can take that break. No, you help one another out. It's kind of gone a little bit. We've got a bit competitive and, you know, she's got all the got sort of thing. So it's the ones that aren't doing anything to really inspire the, their own lives that then can't be happy for someone else. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Of course I noticed the reaction of other women around me, of the other mums. But rather than be offended uh, by their sudden, uh, slightly hostile attitudes, I decided and realised that what had happened to me could help transform the lives of other women and since my background had been in filmmaking I thought this could make an amazing documentary if I help to translate my experience and share it with other people it might help to address so many of the issues that are underlying the reality and the experience of motherhood in Australia Mm -hmm. And I think that the other people could find something who can reflect in us and just maybe they will not be um, agree with all how all our thinkings, mm -hmm. ideas, but maybe they can just catch one of them and and think about it and just uh, build his way on right. on this idea maybe yeah, that's right so it would be nice that's all it takes with this in mind i set about identifying precisely what had happened to me and why it had the effect it did this involved a brutally honest self-reflection and self-correction i then researched and read delving into french history to decipher it and construct the reason for Parisian women's mysterious je ne sais quoi, until I put enough dots together so that I could say, maintenant, oui, je sais quoi.
Now I do know what. <laughs> I spoke with several hundred women of all backgrounds and ages in France and Australia on topics I believe to be relevant to contemporary women's experiences. I researched Australian women's history to gain an understanding of subliminal links between present and past attitudes and feelings. Out of my own pocket, I put together a small budget to start creating a film trailer for funding purposes, which admittedly took a while considering that the camera hire and travel was considerable cost at the time for me. Not to mention having to fit all of this around my kids' needs, their schedules. I then interviewed and filmed women in Australia and France. Slowly, this idea which started based upon a lightning bolt experience and revelation in 2009 in France blossomed into something more substantial, which I in fact strongly believe will help improve the lives of many women and entertain them too. And that's exciting because the perspective I'm coming from for this film hasn't been done before. I am quite confident that it will open people's eyes up to new visions and models that they can apply to themselves. I understand. You know? Because that's, that's because we are all connected and um, we, we have all another perception of reality. Before to think about it, and before to realize uh, this way, before to come to Australia, and Australia, and you bring me this perception too. Yeah. We, we, are, we are live. I, I believe now, we are living in the same plan, mm -hmm. but in different reality, because we have different experiences, we have different uh, perception of life, and so we can't feel the thing in the same way, but all of us, we are connected around you and your perception of life and your different perception of life. Because I, I, I understand now, you don't have only one perception of life, but you have a multitude, how do you say, uh, uh, many, many, many perception of life. So, so all of us can be connected. It's, it's what feels natural. It's just what feels natural. It's not just one way to be, yeah. you know? But it, 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 it's natural for you, but not for everyone, you know? Everyone think about them and their life and their own family and their own family. But you, you think about everyone and want everyone connected, connected together, to think together. And that's the way people uh, build something together. The people who I interviewed and who generously shared their time, experience and wisdom with me, I'll be forever grateful to them. Over the course of developing this project, I've been asked by some why it's taken me so long, apart from the fact that any film project, especially a documentary, can take a while. I am first and foremost a mother who prioritises my four children. If I had a nanny or a housekeeper or a chauffeur, things might have been different. And for all the talk in mainstream media about the importance of supporting representation of women by women, a sector which continues to be underrepresented due to the responsibilities and limitations involved in raising children, from mothers, how are we supposed to fulfill our dreams and potential, which we worked hard toward, if then once we're in the role of motherhood, the odds are stacked against us especially single mothers, especially those trying to make a path for themselves in the media. I was a single mother for five years after ending my first marriage. Not an easy thing. And not to mention those of us who are of non-Anglo-Saxon background and never even hear accents on mainstream Australian TV. Yet we too want to make a presence and communicate our perceptions and lives. So how do we tell our stories, share our perspective, and break through cliches of non-representation on screen? Regardless of the pace of this documentary's progression, I've continued developing it alongside finalizing a divorce, rebuilding my sense of self, taxi mum runs of school drop-offs and pickups, housekeeping, home, and feeding four growing boys, dealing with health issues, attending medical appointments, school excursions, birthday parties, play dates, endless laundry, cooking, driving to and fro, tutoring lessons, and more. 
and then getting remarried. Being as attentive a mother as I could be at every time that they needed me. Providing firm yet loving guidance and indulging them when I was able to. Doing all the parenting solo with a two day breather once a fortnight as they would spend time with their dad. Sure, piece of cake. Get a film done and dusted. <laughs> oh Lord. As one mother said to me when I was interviewing her for the trailer, motherhood is the hardest thing I've ever done, including kicking cancer's ass. This is how five years flew by as a single mother. Yours truly, trying to do her best to balance family with life. Until I met a wonderful man who became my best friend and after six years we got married. In March 2020, the month we went into lockdown, I'd finally finished the last details on the trailer. Can we think about the moment when you come to Paris and you think it's that the way, spiritual wake-up moment for you? If you go back to the mo this moment with the, this new perception, do you think you will have the same a fabulous experience or it will change something for you that it's like you have to almost be like um like be an artist but with your life because you have to be so open despite setbacks which took away from the momentum at different times i am encouraged by a few factors firstly the issues i initially wished to cover have evolved through my research gathered depth and remain relevant if not more so now Secondly, I feel that I have, as a woman, matured in a way that my sensibility and perceptions can only be an asset to the production. Sure, I'm a little older, but maybe a little bit wiser, and I think that will help. This has pleasantly surprised me, as it was a personal development that unfolded gradually with a lot of meditation too, and fills me with confidence that I can do I can do the film more justice now and I can represent and interview the people in a different way that I had even before. I feel ready to take this forward. But more importantly, my family is also better prepared for me to take this next step. With four children over the age of 16 who have now more independence and flexibility, the juggling game and family duties continue but the dynamic has changed compared to when they were younger. I'm looking forward to seeing what this next stage brings. I remain 100% committed to telling this story and helping to inspire women and men to find new ways to create more happiness in their lives, as I did from Paris. I hope you enjoyed listening to the blog post reading with the surprise guest recordings that helped capture the moment and give context to my experience so far. If you're a woman in France or in Australia and would like to share your experiences with me uh, to do with the reality of life there, uh, please feel free to reach out to me on the blog contact section of Passionista Femme International. And, uh, and you never know, you may find yourself being interviewed in a not too distant future for the documentary. This is yours truly, Lorena Guzman for Passionista Femme International wishing you all a beautiful day. Thank you for listening.